This is Dr. Charles Parker, and you're listening to Core Brain Journal. It's a place where I connect both fresh discoveries and interesting different perspectives from advanced mind science with the realities of real people and everyday life down on Main Street. Well, welcome, folks. Here we are one more time, Dr. Charles Parker, and we are here with an interesting guest who covers some things that we've covered in other episodes, specifically 062 and 063, talking about music and the mind. And then Alec Domain, and I'm looking for his 046. So you'll be interested tonight in listening to our guest, Corey Livingston. Hey, Corey, welcome aboard. Oh, nice to be here. Thank you, Dr. Charles. So Corey is not only a musicologist, he has some really thoughtful ideas about how music can actually change our minds in a very constructive way. He has some strong opinions about music. He is a, a more than a musicologist, he is an entertainer, he is a composer, and uh, to just give you a little bit of an intro, uh, Corey was born and raised in Toronto, a town that I love personally. He combines a lifelong career of being a pianist, uh, a composer, a songwriter, and his love of being a business entrepreneur. So as a keynote artist, Corey combines his keynote speaking with original music that he performs on stage to underscore the theme of his talks. He was the founder and director of the Toronto High School of Performing Arts, very big responsibility, whose students include Cree Summer Franks, Kenal Reeves, Brooke Johnston, and a number of other really noted, noted uh, uh, celebrities. He graduated uh, from, uh, let me read this, Wilfrid Laurel University, not familiar, sorry to stumble over that, and he is a published author now, and we're going to talk about his book as well. So thanks so much again, Corey. So what are you doing now? What, what are you up to? Well, right now I'm, uh, I'm back on composing. You know, I, uh, I still study music, you know, and and the way I've come, my, my newest philosophy is, it's one thing to study music, but it doesn't mean a thing if you don't put it into practice. So these new things that I'm learning, I'm actually composing now, tunes that are incorporating the things that I learn. I go for a lesson once a week, you know, uh, you never stop learning. So yeah. it's been a new, it's a new, uh, I guess, a new inspiration to my writing. So, so I've learned this technique this week or... I'm trying to understand, and it helps me understand it better. So if I can write about it, if I can write a tune incorporating it, that's going to cement it home because I know that's, you know, memory learning is one thing, but memory and doing, you have to complete, then you, then you understand, okay? Memory only says that you remember what the teacher said. <laughs> so, Corey, what are you working on right now? When you said that, it definitely piqued my interest. It sounds like you've got a little twist to something going on that you're thinking about. Well, I'm, I'm composing, you know, it's just that I'm composing, but I've, I've changed my manner of uh, people might say, well, what's your inspiration for, for, you know, why did you write this or why did you write that? So I'm, I'm actually, you know, my, at this protect, protect present time, I'm just composing with trying to solidify new things that I learned. Oh, so I'm, you. I'm, so I'm putting it. I'm putting it into action. So you know, it's new tunes, and a fact that you know they're they're all instrumental, because the nature of what I'm learning is you know a song is one thing. The main thing when you're when you're talking about a, talking about a song, you're talking about well, it's got nice words. The words mean something. It's got some ni a nice melody, but instrumental music and and vocal music are worlds apart. Okay, mm, there's oh, tell uh, us about instrumental. That. Instrumental music is, is very, very technical. There you can say, well, I've got a house, okay, it's got a, it's got a, it's got a, a clay roof, it's got the double glazed windows, it's got uh, 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 um, parquet, oh, it's got uh, maybe bamboo flooring, uh, and I've got a, I've yeah. got a fireplace, and I've got a wall here, and I've got all these little things that, you know, that you go into, so it looks, looks like a real house, as opposed to Okay, uh, I've got a house there, and it's worth X amount of dollars. Okay, that's sort of like a song. There it is, worth X amount of dollars. But I'm looking at the 
all the details of the house, you know, and they use the uh, solar panels and they use this. So I get to use, I get to concentrate on the, on the intrinsic things. People that are, people, they see it, but you don't really notice it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's the, re it's the real craft. You really get in and that's what, you know, inside music, instrumental is really the craft opposed to when you're doing the songwriting, the tune and the words, uh, that's all you really need, okay? And that's, that's good enough, okay? Well, tell us a little bit about that great meeting with the, the gentleman, Ray Carroll, who was one of the platters who was so inspirational to you. That must have been just a great opportunity to know a guy like that. Well, that was near the start of my career, you know, and I was looking for a, an agent to get me some work, and, and he, was, he was living up here in Toronto, of all things, at the time, you mm -hmm. know? Uh, you know, and, and he is he is American, but he was living up here, and I it was just by accident I found him. So he says, you know, I'm green, right? He knows I'm green, the guy with his experience, right? So he says, okay, uh, I'll see, I, I'll try and work with you. And so we went out together a couple of nights, and he took me around town to see various entertainers, and he taught me what entertaining, you know, because he knew these, he knew what kind of entertainers he was taking. This he knew, so he taught me. He just taught me by showing me all these simple, subtle things uh -huh. that the guys were doing. You know, uh -huh. and this is entertainment, not music, but it's entertainment. You uh -huh. know, uh -huh. and to make a living in music, you got to be an, an entertainer first. And music is really secondary. You know, um, it's it's very rare. I mean, it's a stratified area. Where I'm starting, you got to be. You, when I where I started, you had to be. You have to entertain them. They don't care about your music. You could be the greatest musician. The greatest. You could play upside down and backwards, and you know, <laughs> with elephant on your back. Yeah. You know, lit full flame and fireworks. Yeah. Uh, you you gotta. It's 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 all sizzle. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Very interesting point. So he, yeah. So he showed me that, you know, those things, and he had me listening to. Uh, to, he had me listening to, uh, he had told me to go out and buy these records. I don't know, most people won't know, but way back, you may know him, his name was Woody Woodbury. Mm -hmm. And oh. he was a he was a piano player, and he, 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 he I think he, oh, well, he lived in literally one of the hotels in Florida back in the 50s and 60s. I mean, he was the resident pianist. He was a pianist, but he was really a comic. You know, he'd play, he'd, he'd play a tune, uh, and tell a funny story, and then tell a funny story, and then do a song about the funny story and joke. So he was probably 10% musician <laughs> and 90 cent, uh, mm -hmm. 90 percent uh, comedian. So he had me listening to this guy writing down all his lines. <laughs> so I, uh, so I took them to the clubs with me, and I was using all his lines, you know, verbatim, all the jokes that he used, you know. And that was how he taught me to. Uh, you know, to uh, go out and actually meet people, you know, that were, because those are the days I was playing in the piano bar and people sat around the piano and drinks, you know, and talking. So he taught me how to have this intercourse <clears throat> with people through uh, just by watching the pros that he knew about. Well, so know, in those days, there was more uh, intimacy because they were right there with you. You weren't even on stage. You were, they were right across the piano from you. Right across the piano. So yeah. then, uh, was he singing still, or did he uh, was he an agent? I didn't quite get that part of it. He was he was he was he was an agent. He sang once in a while, like he had a few a few bands that he was working with, and once in a while, he would go and show up on their stage, right, mm -hmm. <laughs> and sing. You know, ladies and gentlemen, uh, one of the former Platters, Ray Carroll. You know, and mm. uh, there's a funny story, but when we were out one time in this uh, was a New York, we were out in the bar. Just listen to this uh, this organ player, um, and some young kid. He must have been probably about twenty or eighteen. He says to me, "I know you. I know you. You're a platter person. You're a platter person." And this is probably thirty years, forty years after, you know, after his Haiti. So that was a tremendous compliment to him because oh, yeah. the guy yeah. he didn't know his name. He said, "You're a platter person. You're a platter person." <laughs> what fun! What fun! That would that would be entertainment in itself. The entertainer yeah. gets entertained. Yeah. Fantastic. So you have some very strong opinions about music 
and kids and what should be done in that regard. I'd, I'd really appreciate if you'd share with our audience because you, you have some serious intentionality going on regarding what we need to do next as, uh, as we grow our children. Well, you know, um, all, all of my, um, I guess my theories, they sort of came to be while I was writing my book. You know, the light went on. Just, just a little story behind the book. Uh, there's a fellow, one of my, my actually my, one of my mentors, his name is uh, Robert Allen. He's a New York number one bestseller. And he said, everybody's got a book in them. Okay, and he's right. Mm -hmm. So I was digging out my book. And mine was basically about music. What I learned about life because I studied music, okay, mm -hmm. and I had, it was actually a training ground for life, music was, uh, even though I trained to be a professional musician, but in my, as I wrote the book, and in, in my book, I just, it just came out, and I wrote about what I learned, mm -hmm. okay, about music, does this for you, and this, it did this for me, it made me, <clears throat> um, made me responsible, made me organize my time, it made me accountable, you know, I had to do it, you know the old saying, just do it, mm -hmm. uh, that was my motto long before Nike came out with it, you know, <laughs> just do it. Yeah. So, and, and then, and so I'd written, I'd written the book, or I was in the course of, well, I was well underway, and I said, you know, people reading this probably think, well, this guy's, he's just shooting, shooting his mouth off, and, mm -hmm. you know, what does he know? You know, I researched, Dr. Park, I researched, and the science backed up every single thing that I, I was floored. Mm -hmm. You know, psychiatric science backed up every single thing that I said, and I included that in the book to show people. So what I came upon naturally, okay, is has been scientifically proven. That, you know, I'm not just, it's just not a freak. I'm not a freak of nature. Yeah. Okay. So, so what I say is, uh, and I, I address this to parents, and I also address this to other people, all people who teach music. And it helped me become a better teacher. Um, the object of music lessons, I don't care if it's singing lessons, um, violin lessons, guitar lessons, ballet lessons. Um, the bottom line is, it's not to make you a professional. It's not to make you the best. It's not to make you, oh, look what little Johnny and Mary can do, you know. But we're the proud parents. The real benefit of music is that it will develop your child emotionally, physically and mentally to be successful later on in life because you're giving them the tools to be your actually it's the mindset okay it's not actually it's not a, a uh, um, insert a into b and b into c it's your this uh, uh, music is the discipline that builds the mindset that allows you to be accountable it builds you the mindset that you know that you have to do this. It builds a mindset that says that I've got to be organized. And this will make you successful uh, if you want to be a carpenter, an electrician, a doctor, a lawyer. It doesn't matter. Uh, a, uh, you know, uh, uh, a, a sanitary engineer, it doesn't matter. Uh -huh. But you will be the best that anybody can be or you can be if you have the minds the proper mindset and this is what musical training will do for children so i say to parents who say oh gee what if he doesn't like it what if he doesn't, oh gee uh, i don't think i can afford that instrument it's not an expense it's an investment okay it's your kid your kid you know if i have 100 students you know how many uh, you know how many who will really be musicians 
Five. If I'm lucky. Mm -hmm. Probably two. Mm -hmm. Two if I'm very lucky. Mm -hmm. One if I'm lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Well, let's well, stop right here because I want to catch you on something. Because you said a whole bunch of really interesting things, and I want to back the tape up a little bit and ask mm -hmm. you this because we, we kind of teased the audience, and I apologize for not stopping you earlier because we didn't even mention the name of your book. We're talking in kind of in euphemisms in a way without coming down to what the name of your book is. So let's talk about that. Yeah, it's called Quiet Determination, Unlocking the Gates to Unlimited Success. Okay, that's the name of the book, and we'll have that in the show notes. Now, there's another thing that came up. So I was thinking a lot while you were talking because uh, I was certainly responding to the uh, interesting way you were looking at it. And what occurred to me, and one of the things we see, is how human beings are really not hooked up with uh, timing and change. Change and time, time is a reality. You haven't said this, but I'm saying this to our audience. Time is a reality. People don't think of time as a reality. It's sort of like because you can't touch it and you can't see it, it's not real. But time is a very important reality, and if you have no respect for time, you're not living in the real world. You're living in some kind of a dream. Personalized sense of denial. And then when you synchronize with changes in time to actually put it together in a a melodic way, in a way that a person can really understand it, you then actually are dealing with it with a type of reality and training yourself to be tuned in and sequentially related to changing reality. Now, I don't, that's a little deep, but I thought I'd throw that out there because it's certainly that's what I was thinking when you were talking. Great. <laughs> He's like, oh, <laughs> hey, Parker. <laughs> that's an. In that, that's that's a that's a deep that's a deep area there you're going to yeah. Well, you were talking about it, and I just was you know I was, because you were talking about this is how people can improve their lives. Every example you gave was you're going to have you're encouraging individuals to synchronize themselves and practice synchronization and appreciation yeah. of change as opposed yeah. to fighting it and disrespecting it, which is what does go on with executive function challenges, people like, I don't, it's no big deal. I'm going to let it go. It's not a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and let next, you go. You So uh, how does one do this? That's the next question, because that's a very important next step. Well, it's, it's funny you talked about executive functions, and uh, <laughs> I'm just going to jump a little ahead. Music, part of the research addresses... Uh, music and executive functions, which is, you know, from, 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 from how I understand it, is basically making decisions, understanding what it is, uh, making good decisions, uh, analyzing consequences, so on and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. And music actually is something that enhances, from my research, enhances executive function. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and like I say, uh, the scientists can't tell you so far, you know, exactly how they just observe, you know, observation. If I see this, then this. So if this is present, this is present. So that's another thing I say to parents, the executive functioning. And basically, in layman's terms, makes you smarter. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. That's amazing. Could we underline, underline that with a couple of exclamation points, you know? Well, I mean, it does. I think the issue there is smarter in a lot of ways. Not only more intelligent in that your thoughts can become more organized because you have an appreciation of organization, but I think music, and this is, I mean, I haven't thought about this before, but I'm just appreciating talking to you. I think there's a certain depth with music where, wherein even rock and roll, you're catching a certain... Uh, emotional differentiation uh, with where you might be at the moment into another person's life and where they are and and uh, and you can also and the entertainment part of it but you're deeper because you're thinking I think more profound thoughts most of the time other than just hey it's not just partying exactly and see and and the, the powerful thing about music it it allows What's that? What's that special? What's the fancy word that joins the left and right, the the, the both sides of the brain? Bilaterality. Um, there's a there's a fancy 
Super there's an organ of something. Well, there's, there's a corpus callosum. Corpus callosum. Yes, yeah. right. Music actually enhances its ability to get both sides, the logical side and the, let's say, artistic side, creative side of the brain working, talking to each other. And so one of the outcomes of that is people who study music are great problem solvers. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Because they're putting the two uh, together, yeah. Yeah. And you, you talked about rock and roll. You talked about that. This reminds me of there was a research done on the personality types and music uh, preferences. Uh, like, let me just look at the. They've got one. And this is this is research that was that that was done. Um, let me see who did it. Um, I couldn't tell you off him, but anyways. Just, just, this is just for cure, just for, this is just FYI type of thing. Uh, if you like to listen to pop music, it says, uh, listening to top 40 hits suggests that you're an extrovert, honest and conventional. Okay. Although pop, mu pop music lovers, uh, they have a high self-esteem, but research suggests that they tend to be a little less creative and a little more uneasy. Now compare that to rap and hip hop. You know, stereotype of, of, of rappers, you know, you, you think it's violence. But in the research, they are more aggressive. Uh, they don't find any research that, they, that they're more aggressive. They, the rap fans tend to have high self-esteem and are usually outgoing. Um, take a look at heavy metal. Now, there's something that sounds nasty. But these people tend to be creative. And they often suffer from low self-esteem. So there's all kinds of things that music can identify in, in people, according to the people, uh, you know, the scientists who have studied personalities uh, connected to music. Well, that's interesting. Did you cover some of that in your book? I did cover some of that, yes. I oh. went through the dance music, uh, classical music, jazz and blues. That's in there sort mm -hmm. of describing, you know, their, the, what their personality, their core personalities are like. Sounds very, very interesting. Now, on the entertainment side, let me, uh, uh, first of all, the, the book is going to be very interesting, but I want to take it a, a little further down the road, and that is, you as a person, are you an entertainer, or are you mainly a speaker talking about entrepreneurial development? How does all that work together? Because I imagine you being on the stage, but I, if you could just fill me in on how that, how that happens for the audience. It's... The, my real my real moniker would be keynote artist. Uh -huh. So, so and I'm using both, uh, and that's one blessing I've had all my life. I've been able to be artistic. I've been able to be very logical. Okay, I I can be a businessman. I can be an artiste. So mm. I I've always. Been, enjoyed I know that in order to be successful in music I have to take care of the business side you know I know a lot of friends of mine in the, who've tried to be full-time musicians I mean they're sitting at a home waiting for the phone to ring and they're taking a subway back and forth to work you know wherever they have to go um, but I've I've taken the the business side which would be the keynote speaking and I'm I would speak about Whatever, because I cover a lot of different topics, as you know, you probably speak yourself, some things you have to make tailor-made. And, but to drive that home, I have my piano on stage, and as you know, as keynote speakers, the main job is to tell a story, okay? Mm -hmm. That's all keynote speaking is telling a story. And how well you tell a story, uh, that tells how successful you're going to be. People, and so you tell the story, but people don't remember the story. What they remember from the story is how the story made them feel. Mm. Okay. Yes. And music is emotion. So on the t on the heels of that story that I'm I've just told, I'll come out with a song mm -hmm. that's built around that particular story. But it's the real mean. The real purpose is to underline the emotion because music is emotion. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's flat out emotion. It's the only tool 
like you can listen to music and make you very sad. You will love it. Mm-hmm. But if I told you your best friend just died, you're very sad. You don't like it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Music, music is the only thing that because we we like emotions. Mm-hmm. Everybody, you know, even we, you know, you go to the movie, you cry. Why do you cry? It's a sad scene, but the music is what throws you over the top. Well, you know, apropos of that, I'll just mention one thing. My wife and I went to see uh, uh, Manchester by the Sea this weekend. And one of the things that was so interesting to me, which I'm sure you as a musician would appreciate, is it seemed like it was kind of a very deep, blue-collar, low-functioning demographic people who were just angry and mixed up and, and all over the place with family values that were puzzling and, and irritated and angry. And, but what they did is they uh, interposed classical music throughout uh, as a person was as they transition scenes. And it was really quite interesting because you had the humanity of the people was coming through the classical music because in truth they weren't really low-end blue-collar demographic. They were real people with real struggles and and that music helped transcend and make it a more universally applicable experience as you were actually seeing some of the catastrophic things happen happen on the screen. Is that very interesting? And that you know, and 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 I'll tell you the reason. Part of that, for part of that, is because you know, classical music is very organized, very detailed, very proper. So it was actually showing the audience, or telling the audience, without telling them, that these people are just as refined. <laughs> all mm-hmm. people are refined. All people are. Yeah. Or, all people need organization. All people have these finer qualities. Yeah, very well said, very well said. Yeah, that was great. So listen, we're winding up. We have a little more time here, but listen, take a moment, if you will, on this, uh, Corey, as as we close down here, and tell us a little bit about where you would like people to go. Uh, We're going to have your book in the show notes. Uh, You know, in in fact, I want to just mention that you've been kind enough to do a book giveaway for our audience. And that'll yes. be available if people listen to this for two weeks from the date of this publication when you when you're actually when we actually uh, set this uh, podcast up. And uh, you've been kind enough to offer a, a copy of your book, and it'll be a drawing, so people can just leave their names and address, and we get you out and have a little drawing, and and that's going to be great. So having said that, let's go back to how can people connect with you? What would be the way to to be more involved with your your efforts and what you're doing. Well, they can uh, easiest place to buy the book is on Amazon.com. Just type in that title, Quiet Determination, mm-hmm. and uh, that should pop right up. My name, mm-hmm. which is I think there's only one or two other things with that name or even close to that name. Uh, you can write to me. Uh, my email is uh, Corey. That's K O R Y. Uh, and then that's Corey at Corey Livingstone, my full name, uh, dot com. So it's Corey at Corey Livingstone dot com. Mm-hmm. Uh, write me there. And um, also, uh, as, as another as another special giveaway, uh, Dr. Parker, if those of you who want to write me there, uh, it's not ready yet, but when it's, it is ready, the... I'll have the oral version of the book on MP3, and I'll send you off a copy. Oh, aren't you something? Well, that's very nice. So you're going to do, uh, is, it, is it an audible book? Is that what you're going to do? An audio book, yeah. Fantastic. So that'll be anybody who writes me and says, yeah, I heard you on the Dr. Dr. Parker show, and I like a copy. Uh, when it's ready, it'll probably be a couple of months, you know, because I'm, I'm just in the process of doing it now. But when it's ready, I will I'll email you the MP3. So you're in the studio then. Now, let me ask you this question because you got my curiosity up because I know I'm talking to a real musician. Now, are you, do you play the piano when you're doing it? Uh, you know, that is the next. I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, I almost forgot. I'm adding my original music in the background, you know, and I... I remember, I thought of that 
two or three months ago, but between then and now, I've forgotten all that. So thank you for reminding me. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like I'm going to have to send you an email, buddy. I mean, I got to get, I got to get in on this thing. Yeah. I, I can listen yeah. to you in the car. Yeah, so I am going to put my music in the, my piano, some of my piano music. I, I have an album out. It's called Dream Harbor. Wow. And it's made, it's made just for a relaxing, de-stressing, that whole bit. And now, it's, of course, it's original music. It's just the piano. So I'm going to put that in the, in the background. Now, is Dream Harbor available uh, on iTunes, or where, where do you find that? You can go to my website, uh, CoreyLivingstone.com. Okay, great. And just go, just go to the music section. You, I've got. You can download. You can buy all my music there. Oh, fantastic! Well, that's great. Well, Core, thank you so much for coming on board. I mean, have you had a lot of snow up there in Toronto? We've had rain, believe it or not. Yeah, it's and all last week and and uh, and a couple of days ago. Rain, 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 rain. It was foggy. Yeah, that's wild. It's a different winter. Yeah, we. It's it's a different winter. Well, listen, I'll let you go. It's very kind of you to take the time to share your experience with our audience and your insights about the development, developmental opportunities that are really quite there with, with music and, and your own musical experience. And look forward to uh, perhaps talking again sometime. My pleasure, Dr. Parker. Thanks for having me. Thank you, buddy. Have a good one. Thanks for listening to Core Brain Journal. We're working every day behind the scenes to bring you reports that connect research benches with those street trenches. Here we share the complexity of mind science because as you know, details really do matter. One of the most pervasive misunderstood challenges is how commonplace medications like those written for ADHD are used so regularly without clear guidelines. If you think you'd like more specifics, take a minute to download my two-page PDF packed with video links and references on the absolute essentials of how to start ADHD medications. They're easily available at corebrainjournal.com forward slash start. Thanks for listening. Do connect and stay tuned. Together we can make a difference.